Okay, so welcome back to part two of the backswing. So in our first video, we talked a little bit about trying to get those good player mannerisms into setting up to the golf ball, worked on trying to get that club to work back and more in that square club face. And then also we talked a little bit about um, kind of using more of those hands to start the backswing. Now we're going to get into part two of the backswing, kind of getting into that three-quarter position in the backswing and then also what's a good top of the backswing as well. We're also going to be talking a little bit about swing plane and how to get yourself onto the right swing plane in the backswing uh, for this video. If you haven't done so already, thanks so much for coming back to my channel, but please go ahead and click on that subscribe button down below, just below this video, and then the bell button right next to it. That'll give you notifications for future videos that I post, and, uh, and, and it'll kind of keep you tuned in with uh, all the information and content that I'll be, I'll be posting here at this channel. So... Uh, so yeah, go ahead and click on that subscribe button now, and uh, we'll now go right into the video. Okay, so we've now talked so much about getting into the ball correctly with good player mannerisms. We've talked about that first move away from the ball, kind of getting the, with a little bit of the hands, and the club face pointing at the golf ball as we go back and getting into this good position here. Now we're going to go keep going back. Now, we talked a little bit about this club on the backswing before or during my first part one of the video. Now we're gonna keep going back. So as you can see, I got to the club to here. Now, as you go back here, I wanna see that this club is kind of matching that stick there on the ground. Now, a good little drill that you could do is to kind of take this club or another stick or another club and make it an extension of your current club that you're currently holding. Okay, so as you can see here, I got a nice extension here. I'm just holding that club right right in right in with my hands here. I'll kind of come in a little closer here so you can see here. So I just got the club gripping into this grip, and now I'm holding both here. So now I got this nice extended club here. And what this is going to help me do, especially when I have this little setup here, and if you don't have this setup at home, you know, you can easily put down other sticks where I have the boards, and then uh, and then maybe... Maybe use some chopsticks at home if you're working at home to kind of make a little little circle here for you. But the target line is going to be more important for this drill. So as I take my backswing here, I'm going to want to see that this shaft points down to that target line. If I took that club back too much to the inside and took it way inside here, you can see at the three-quarter position back here that the club is pointing out beyond the target line. And then if I got the club going back too vertically, you can see how the shaft would now point down inside of the target line. So we want to make sure that, that when that club is going back, that that shaft is pointing right at that target line in the backswing. So that's a good little drill for you to do. Now, the other thing that we talked about last time, too, was that squareness of that face. So how can you make sure that you keep that squareness of that face, especially as you get into this three-quarter position in the backswing? Well, it's called the knuckle count drill. Once again, another drill I got from Jim McLean, and it's a great little drill here where actually when you come to the, impact, the start position here, so it's more from your point of view, and actually I'm going to sneak behind the camera here to kind of show you what this looks like. So as you can see here, if you can see my hands here, when you take your grip, you're going to be able to count a certain amount of knuckles here. So if I have this lined up correctly, you should be able to see maybe one, two, maybe two and a half knuckles here in my left hand as I take my grip. They we're just talking about the left hand here, okay? So this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the knuckle count, how many knuckles you can see in that left hand. So now that you know what I mean by the knuckle count, as you start that backswing, I'm going to look down at the ground, see how many knuckles I can see, and then when I get back to about three quarters of the way back, I should look at my left hand again, and I should be able to see the same amount of knuckles. Now, if I get this face pointing two down to the ground, two shut, and then get up here to the halfway back, uh, three-quarter position back position, as you can see, well, when I'm looking at my hand here, I can't see those two knuckles, two and a half knuckles that I saw before. And then the same happens if I overdo the roll of my face. So as we talked about in the first video, the face points up to the sky, and then I get up to the to the three-quarter position here. Now, when I look at my hand, I can see one, two, three, four knuckles. That's another big no-no because it's not the same amount of knuckles I saw from the beginning. So when I get set up here, I want to see two and two and a half knuckles here between uh, when I'm set up to the ball. And then when I get three quarters of the way back, I want to see those same two knuckles. 
and then see that this shaft is once again pointing at that target line. Or if you don't have that drill, another way to think about it is that we would see that that shaft is roughly on a 45 degree angle, not on a 90 degree angle and definitely not on a zero degree angle. Okay. Another cool thing to take a look at here is that if you can see that shaft is matching my right shoulder. That's another way to kind of check to see if your club is in the right position is if it's just a little bit under your right shoulder in the backswing. A big extreme to the outside would be taking that club too much outside and taking that club outside that right shoulder or taking it way too much inside where it's kind of near your elbow. But once again, as we talked about in the first video, working with some extremes can help. So. If you're somebody that tends to take the club way too much to the outside and you tend to kind of cut across it, taking that club and really trying to go way underneath this right shoulder in that extreme can really help your game. Now I gotta take a brief moment here and just talk a quick bit about a misconception that I think is, tends to be overtaught quite a bit. And what that is is that if you take the club too much to the inside, you're, you're going to get stuck, and then it's going to force you to come over the top. I do not think that this is a true statement. I have taught many, many people very successfully to take the club extremely to the inside, and it has actually helped their game. And here's the reason why I don't think it gets you stuck to the inside and makes you forces you to come over the top, is because I think that the over-the-top motion is actually caused by too much of an open club face, not from being too much stuck inside. And what do I mean by that? If you tend to get the club face too open, either if it's at a dress, in the backswing, and then particularly on the downswing, what that tends to do is it gets the ball to curve too much to the right. So what most people tend to do to fight that, that ball curving too much to the right, is that they tend to swing over the top and swing quite a bit to the left to try to stop that ball from curving too much to the right. It's just the amateur's way of dealing with this problem of the slice. So you coming over the top is not caused by the club coming too much inside in the backswing. It's caused by having too much of a close, uh, too much of an open club face. So if we talk to, uh, if you keep that feeling of what we talked about earlier, keep, keeping that club face pointing at the ball. Making sure at this point here, I'm counting the same amount of knuckles. And then you take that club underneath that right shoulder. It's going to be a perfect setup for a draw. Club face pointing at the ball in the backswing. And then the club going underneath that right shoulder is a perfect setup for that draw. So we get set up. Get that club in that three-quarter position in the backswing. And then if you can err more on the underside of that right shoulder, it's going to promote you hit, hitting more of a draw. And if you're more of that average golfer who kind of struggles to break 100 or breaking 90, being more on the draw side is going to help. And you being more on the underside of your right shoulder in the backswing will set you up for a better position. Being under the right shoulder in the backswing does not get you stuck and doesn't force you to come over the top unless you have an open face. That is really the cause of coming over the top. It is not from taking the club too much to the inside. Okay? So, get that club to feel like it's going underneath that right shoulder. Feel like your, your knuckle count is correct here at the top. And now we're getting up to the top of the backswing. And from here at the top of the backswing, what you'll see is that my left wrist is nice and flat, or if anything, a little bit bowed. That keeps that face on the square or a slightly closed position. If you're one that tends to hook the ball too much to the right and you get the hooks going, this would be a good feeling for you. Not feeling so much of this bowed position at the top, but actually feeling more of a cupped position at the top. As you can see here, I'll come in a little bit closer so you can see. This is a cupped position where the left arm and the left hand create this little, little cupped position, this little angle here, okay? That's the cupped position. And if you're one that tends to hook the ball to the left too much, once again, for a right-handed golfer, you're gonna wanna feel more of that cupped position there to try to get that face a little bit more open to prevent yourself from getting the face too close, which is what causes too much hooks. 
okay? So that top of the backswing, ideally in a perfect world, we want that face, that left wrist to be nice and flat, which then squares the face at the top. But if you tend to be more of a slicer, we'll want to air a little bit more on that bowed position at the top of the swing. And if you're more of a hooker of the golf ball, we're going to want to air more in that cupped position at the top of the swing. So that's part two of our two-part video backswing. This is where we're getting our club to get into the correct position. Now, I've did, done a little bit more on the down-the-line view of these, uh, of these two backswing ideas, and that's what, that was kind of done on purpose. I, I'm going to later on come out with some, uh, some backswing videos that are going to show you a little bit more on the face-on. But there's a wealth of knowledge in, in this video, along with my part one backswing video, that will kind of give you plenty of food for thought and have you practice these ideas. What I would love for you to do, though, is for you to kind of practice some of these ideas that I've kind of shown you in this video. And please put down in the comment section uh, some things that you've discovered in practicing these things or any questions that you have on what we've covered here. I'd love to see your comments down below, and I promise to read all of them and, and respond to each of them. So if you have some comments or some questions on what we talked about in, in this video, please put them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you uh, as soon as I can. So thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope this helps your game. Once again, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe uh, to my channel down below. You can click on the red subscribe button just below this video, and then click on the bell button right next to it. That'll give you notifications for future videos that I come out with. And then also, if you really like this video, please go ahead and click on that like button down below. It really helps out my channel a lot. And uh, and I'm really excited about uh, hearing from you. So yeah, please write down one of your comments down below of what you thought about today's video. And uh, if you had any questions, I'll be sure to get back to you. And uh, once again, thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope this helps your game.